Hi, I'm Erin. This is going to be a class that's focused on shoulder mobility, dynamic stretches for the shoulder and the neck. And so you're going to feel a lot of warmth and blood flow in this area. And the idea is to kind of get that circulation going, get a little more range of motion in the joint, let the muscles release. And then we will hold some of those stretches as well as work on some strengthening. It's all about the shoulders, the neck today. So if you're feeling a little tight, a little tension in this area, this is a really good class for you. This is gonna be a beginner level, level all the way to advance. It's really for anybody who wants to just kind of focus on opening the shoulders and the neck. One thing I will know is if you have an injury that's not going away, go get it checked by your doctor. Go see, um, see what's going on because this wouldn't be a good exercise for you if you really do have some type of injury there. So injuries aside, clearance from your doctor, if all that's good, come along and join me in this little session for our shoulders. I have a couple things with me. You don't need a meditation pillow. I was just meditating before this, but you might need a couple blocks. This is not necessary, but if you have a couple blocks, they're good to have for at least one movement we'll do today. And then another thing I have is a yoga stretching band. So when I pull at it, it doesn't have any give. If you don't have one of these, you can use like a belt that doesn't have any elastic in it. Um, that's a really good tool. I think this is gonna be helpful. So if you wanna pause the video now, go grab your tools, do that. If you don't have these things, don't worry. You can still do a lot of the movements without them and I'll cue for you um, some modifications if you can't use this. But we'll start right away. If you have your band, I want you to bring it behind your back, right? And wrap it around just cross it in front. So you can do this with a belt too, most likely. And I have it right in, right below my, um, right at my ribs, really, kind of here below the chest and above the belly button. So right in the center. And this is gonna help us breathe correctly. So sometimes we have, and I just did it there, I just noticed, sometimes when we're breathing from our neck and shoulders and our chest, our primary breathing muscles, we tend to start to have shoulder and neck pain. So some of it comes with posture, some of it comes with poor posture or poor breathing habits. So we're going to start with breathing today. So go ahead and find a comfy place to sit. I just crossed my legs in a different direction. Try to find your sits bones. So rock forward and back, rock side and side, and then you can find the center and then settle in there. If you'd like to close your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. Close the mouth and start to breathe from the nose. Now when you inhale, you should feel that band move. It should expand out. And when you exhale, everything draws in. So we're using this tactile cue of the band to feel the expansion on the inhale and then exhale release. So inhale, rib cage expands outward. Exhale, ribs come in. So we're moving from a vertical breathing pattern. Sometimes that we get into when we're stressed where we're going up and down vertically to a horizontal breathing pattern where we're using the diaphragm, opening up the rib cage, the belly soft on the inhale, the low back stretches and the pelvic floor stretches as well. So think of that 360 degree opening on your inhale and then exhale, ribs come in. Keeping your eyes closed if they're closed. Start to breathe in for four seconds and breathe out for four seconds. Finding a rate that makes sense to you, counting at your own pace, inhaling for four. However slow or however fast that four seconds is and then exhaling for four. It's all good getting into the rhythm of your breath. We're starting to lengthen out the breath and really use the diaphragm muscle. If you still feel like your neck and shoulders are trying to take over, I just want you to focus in more on expanding the belly, expanding the ribs, expanding the back on that inhale and exhale, everything draws in. This is why this band is so helpful right here. Keeping the shoulders and neck relaxed. Two more breaths. Just bring a little smile to your face. See how that lightens the energy and the mood and know that that's always available to you. You 
Okay, let's take one more breath for good measure. Why not, right? Very good work. All right, so you can put this to your side for now. I'd like you to go ahead and move onto your shins. So we're sitting in hero's pose. I'll turn to the side so you can see. I'm sitting on my heels and my toes are facing the ground. So that's the position you'll be in. From here, I want you to sweep your arm forward in a circular motion. Then we're putting a little weight on the arm that's touching the mat. Then we'll come back to center and sweep to the other side. So just kind of get into a rhythm, inhaling and exhaling. Sweeping this shoulder forward. This is what I'm talking about when I say dynamic stretching. So we're getting mobility. We're getting like a little bit of a rhythm here. Going side to side and a lot more blood flow, especially to the joint. So it's synovial fluid, blood flow, all the good stuff we need, the heat in this area, allowing it to wake up and to release that tension. So instead of just static stretching, we're moving, we're doing dynamic stretching. Side to side, making sure this feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you can take the side bend out and just stay here, reaching up and over. It's a good way to modify this position. I always invite you to do modifications. So even myself, if I'm taking a class, um, listening to your body really intently and starting to notice Ooh, where maybe it doesn't feel so good. You know, do you need to take it a little lower? Is that where you are today? So giving yourself permission to take these stretches to your level, never causing pain. If this is causing you pain, I don't want you to do it. I want it to feel good in the body. Okay, a couple more. Okay, so we're gonna bring our hands behind our head. Just fingertips are lightly touching behind the head. And if this hero pose bothers you, you can go back to a seated position. Bring the elbows together and then inhale, open up. So it's together and open, together and open. We'll do a few from this position. Going back to that four count breath if you can. So a slow breath. Breathing through the nose throughout the class. Permission to just stay here. Or if you want to go a little deeper, have your thumbs facing down. Your knuckles are facing right at your temples or they're placed there and then bring the elbows together and open up. Now this might be a little more intense, so just play around with it. Inhaling and exhaling. Keep the breath long, lengthened, and slow, even though the movement's a little quicker. Notice where your breath is, if you're still able to breathe into the ribs, into the belly on the inhale, 360 degree diaphragmatic breathing. Or if you go back to that shallow breathing pattern from the neck, chest, and shoulders. So just notice how your breath goes when you're not 100% focused on it and try to bring the attention back to it. So you might feel a little bit of burning here, a little bit of heat. The heat is good. Good, good, good. <laughs> and an inv invitation to speed it up here if you like, but keep that breath long. I have some of my clients do this at their desk. You know, they take breathing breaks, breathing and stretching breaks. This is one of those good ones to do if you like it. Beautiful work. So just arms down, shake it out nice and easy whatever that looks like to you. 
Nice job. So from here, I want you to go ahead and come to hands and knees. Let me fix my wardrobe, wardrobe adjustment here. Okay, so we're coming to hands and knees. From here, take one hand, reach up, give me a little bit of a twist. So don't push it here. We're opening up the thoracic spine, the back of the shoulders, and then I want you to go ahead and lower all the way down, thread underneath, let your head relax. So it's an inhale, up, exhale, twist. Inhale, up, four seconds, exhale, long exhale, four seconds. Opening and closing. Go back to that big 360 degree diaphragmatic breathing. You can breathe with sound ujjayi breath if you like to. That constriction is good for us. It actually helps us tap into vagal tone. So it helps us with our vagus nerve, which helps the parasympathetic nervous system activate, which really just means it helps you calm down. So ujjayi breathing. It also helps to warm up the body a little bit as well. So creating a little more heat in these twisty movements by using breath, that ujjayi breath, that whisper sounding breath. If you're new to that, don't worry about it. Just offering up some, some um, different techniques you can use. Two more. See, we're kind of staying in these poses a little longer. Good. All right, come back into a child's pose, but bring the hands back towards your heels. Drop your head down. Breathe into the back of the body. If there's any stress or tension, I want you to just release it. With each breath, allow yourself to chill out even more. We're going to do the opposite side. I'm trying to tuck my shirt in for you. Sorry about that. Okay, so twisting thoracic opener and twist on the opposite side. So come back into child, or all hands and knees, excuse me. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, twist. Just like the other side, give yourself a little bit of time here. Don't force it. Try not to judge yourself too, like, oh, I wish I could reach higher, you know, just be happy where you're at right now in the moment and be happy that you're here doing something great for your shoulders and your neck and your body and your mind. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist. Inhale, open. Exhale, twist. You're doing great. So I know, especially for me, um, my kids are getting older now. I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old, but when they were really young and I was taking care of them, my shoulders and neck hurt so much all the time because of holding the young kids and kind of being in that rounded position all the time. I notice if I am doing a lot of computer work, editing, or, you know, just on the calls with clients and stuff like that, I notice the tendency is to kind of round forward or even favor one side. So just taking minutes out of your day and maybe picking a few of these stretches to do kind of get you out of that stuck position that we tend to fall into. That hunched forward, shallow breathing pattern. You can breathe that ujjayi breathing now. Breathing as we're almost constricting the throat making a sound, a whisper sound. I'm starting to feel that tricep and the stabilizing arm work a lot. I don't know about you. Two more. 
And I just kind of go with feel on these. I, I don't get too much into making sure it's perfect. That's just me. I'm imperfectly perfect, right? All right, so once we've finished rotating, come back into that child's pose again. Just drop down, let it all settle in. Try not to stress about anywhere you might need to be right now. If you need a modification for child's pose, I have two fists underneath my hand or my head, my forehead. And this is a really good modification for child's pose. Great job. So this is where I'm going to use the block for a minute. You can use a pillow too. I, I um, want to give you that suggestion. So we're going to go ahead and lay down on our side. I have the block in between my legs. I've had um, spinal surgery in my, in my past, so I'm always very careful of my spine and laying on the side here. Really having a block just helps me a little bit. So it's a feeling thing. See how it feels for you. But we're working our shoulders here. So I want you to go ahead. I'm using another block too for my head today. There we go, that's nice. So go ahead and get your setup. The arm that is directly that you're laying on, I want you to stack on top of it. So what I mean by that is not let the arm out too far. Don't let it too far back, but find somewhere kind of in the middle. Okay, so we're here. I'm gonna bring the top hand and like put my hands together like I'm clapping. From here, we're opening up that shoulder, inhaling and exhaling, coming forward. I'm gonna to need to scoot forward for this one, sorry. All right, so we're here, we're inhaling. Open, and start to really try to get the opposite shoulder down onto the mat. You might not get there today and that's okay. So let's link the breath, inhale forward. And exhale, open. Inhale forward. And exhale, open. Again, it doesn't matter how far you open. We're just starting to get a little bit of a stretch. And the shoulder. Opening up that middle thoracic spine as well. Keep your hips pretty much stacked here. And go back to your breath. Inhale, open the ribs. Exhale, draw the belly in. I like to inhale, fingertips forward. Exhale, twist. Inhale, fingertips forward. Exhale, twist. And if you're at a different pace than me, that's probably normal. It's no big deal. Our bodies are different. I'm feeling pretty tight today, actually. All right, so the next time your hand comes forward, start to do a circular mo motion. Just allow your thumb and your hand to just twist and rotate as it feels, as it wants to. So it's spore is what I mean. We're doing a circular motion in the shoulder joint, trying to increase our range of motion, but doing it very gently, very gentle. We don't have to go forcing these things. So if your circle is really small, that's okay. As long as it doesn't hurt. <clears throat> Breathe through the nose. Now, if you start to find some tight areas, you can kind of hang out in that position for a second. Feel the stretch for a little bit, kind of rock into it as long as it feels good and then keep moving about. Switch directions when you're ready. Rotating in the opposite direction. 
I find that our joints, like our wrist, our neck, our shoulders, our hips, our ankles, these joints specifically really like circular patterns. They like to get that full range of motion. So it's nice to do these big circles, these big sweeps. All right, one more. Really good job here. So go ahead and lay on your belly just for a second before we go to the other side. Lay on your belly. Good. Make a little pillow for your forehead. <clears throat> Check in. Here I want you to focus again on your breathing. If you do not have a correct breathing pattern throughout the day, you are taxing your neck and shoulders. So this could be may maybe your one reason you are having a little bit of discomfort. So that's why I'm focusing big time on the breath. From this position, you should be able to feel your, your 360 degree breathing pattern pretty well. So when you inhale, feel the belly press into the mat. Feel the stretch in the low back and feel your ribs expand out. If you want to explore even more, you can grab your ribs while you're laying down. You can inhale and feel the expansion of the ribs pressing into your hands. So let's take five deep breaths here, or long breaths, not just deep, long. So we'll inhale for four seconds, exhale for eight seconds for five times. When you're ready, inhale. One, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last breath in and out. <clears throat> Okay, so go ahead and get to where you can work the opposite shoulder. So get all the props you need, the pillows you need. If you need nothing, that's fine. You don't need anything. But I like to have these. And set it up again. So the bottom shoulder is not reaching too far forward. We want to tuck it right in the center there underneath. Um, and then the top hand comes on top. And working on that rotation. I'm too close to the wall again. Sorry, I'll move. You keep opening and shutting. Inhaling forward, exhaling, twisting. There we go. Much better. Inhaling forward, exhaling, twisting. So when we exhale, we're kind of wringing out the body, inhaling, we're filling it up, 360 degree diaphragmatic breathing, exhaling, twisting, wringing it out, bring a smile to your face. Just allow this side of your body the same amount of time, same amount of love, same amount of kindness, gentleness as the other side of your body. Twisting to open. Inhale forward. Exhale, twist. Might feel like a little bit of a stretch in the low back, but that's okay. If it's too much of a stretch in the low back, decrease, decrease the amount that you're twisting. You don't have to go as far. So let's try to keep it a little higher up into the shoulder and the thoracic spine versus the lumbar, the low spine. Two more, inhaling forward, exhale, twist. 
And last one before we do those big circular motions. All right, I like these. Let's go forward. Start to rotate the arm, the hand around in a big circle. Same thing on this side. You can start to rotate your wrist, move your fingers, kind of play around with it. Don't be so serious, right? <laughs> easy for me to say but I'm serious don't be serious <laughs> it's all good it's all good that's something I really do like about yoga is it's you can approach it I mean you can approach it pretty pretty serious and a lot of people I guess do but you can also approach it kind of like a kid kind of like a child a little more playful a little more fun I just think that's better, <laughs> personally. <clears throat> How about three more big circles here? Breathe in, fill the ribs. When we fill the ribs, it just tells me that you're using the diaphragm muscle, that it is flattening down on the inhalation. <clears throat> okay, time to switch directions. Woo! <laughs> switch directions. There we go. Opposite. And like we did on the first side, if you do find a really sticky portion of the stretch, mine's always back somewhere back in here. You can kind of hang out there rocking and Rocking it forward and back. Great. You're awesome. I just know it. So if you like the breathing work or if you notice maybe you struggle with it, I do offer a course. A, a breathing basics course. It's fully digital, fully online, and it would be a good place to start. So it's about five hours of videos. Right now, um, as it stands, the price point's like $97. So if you're interested in getting access to that course, I'll put a link below in this video so you can do that. But it is a really good place to start, especially if you notice you have a very shallow breathing pattern and you need a little bit of work on that which is like most people, <laughs> I'd suggest trying it out. And then if you just need some coaching one-on-one, -on -one, I also work virtually with a lot of clients. So I'm here for you if you, if you need me. Go ahead and sit back up. Woo, right? <laughs> How's those shoulders feel? Okay, so from here, why we are doing um, this next stretch, I'm going to put you in a position that kind of gives your, your glutes a stretch too because, you know, we're here, why not? So I want you to roll back onto your hands, it's send the legs up if you can, then cross one over the other. Now I don't care how, how crossed your legs are, make sure the main thing that I do care about is that both glutes are sitting down. If you do not like this position, you do not have to sit here. So whatever leg that's crossing over, just remember we're going to do the opposite one in a little bit here. We'll be stretching the neck on both sides both times so it's not it's not a big deal if my legs are different from yours all right so go ahead and sit up tall here grounding into both sit bones go back to your breath sometimes i actually have to touch my ribs to remind myself to breathe in that 360 degree pattern then go ahead and place one hand down reach the other arm up and over drop your start to drop your neck <coughs> your neck excuse me towards the hand that's on the ground. So let the head hang, essentially. Take a breath. Try to let the feet relax, the face. And start to bring the top fingertips, the hand that's in the air, start to bring the arm down. <clears throat> You're gonna start to feel a stretch, I hope. Make sure it's not too intense. 
And just keep reaching those fingertips towards the ground. You may get there, you may not. I can't get there today, so I'm actually going to use my block because it's right here. And then if you'd like to, you can start to walk your fingertips away from the body and allow yourself to just settle in a little bit more. What you should feel is a nice stretch on this neck here. Play with the movement or the position rather of your chin. You can start to lift your chin up just a little bit. See how that feels. Some people like to open their mouth and close their mouth. See how that feels. Especially my people who clench their jaw at night. Hi. You might play with this position a little bit. I really want you to relax. So we're more into a static hold. Try to release that neck a little more. Two more breaths. And then slowly, please be slow, start to walk your fingertips back towards center. Woo-wee, right? Let's do the other side. <clears throat> I'm keeping my block nearby. You can grab one too if you need to. Inhale, reach up. Exhale. I'm not sure we did this on the opposite side, but let's go ahead and do it on this side. Reach up and over, and then start to let that neck hang. You're going to have some resistance at first where you just want to like grip, grip, try to, try to soften your resistance to the stretch. Breathe into the ribs. Smile. <laughs> now bring that top hand away, nice and slow. Take your time. Oh yes. Reach your fingertips away. Now for me, this side is a little tighter, I, I think, because I can't quite touch the ground on the opposite side, but that's okay. I also have like T-Rex arms, so I have really short arms just so you know. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, it's not a joke. It's true. I have T-Rex arms. All right, from here, just try to let the head release even more. Breathe into the ribs. Oh, yes, I feel it. Actually, in the side body a lot, as well as the neck. Maybe walk your fingertips away if that feels good. Start to play with the angle of the chin. Open and shut your mouth. If you're still fighting resistance, see how you can soften. Use that breath. Okay, and very, very slowly, crawl your fingers back towards center. It's like you're being ring, wrung out, right? Okay, roll back. Legs forward just for a second. Shake, 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 shake. Remember what leg was on front, on top. For me, I'm opposite from you, um, but this was my right leg. So I'm going to roll back, and then I'm going to bring my left leg on top and just start to find the position that this side is. This side's a little tighter. I can already feel it. Um, I want to make sure that I'm sitting on both glutes, and you can do this from a cross-legged position as well. This foot can be all the way down if you have a lot of mobility in the hips. For me today, I just need it kind of stacked up a little bit. That's going to feel good. So from here, we're doing both sides again, maybe not as long, maybe as long. Who knows, right? <laughs> Inhale, reach up. The inexact yoga teacher should be my name, right? Reach up and over. Now release the neck, let your head release, let it be heavy, hanging here to the side. As you can see, I'm not here, I'm not too far back, I'm just centered, keeping it just in the center. On your next breath, start to slowly take your time, reach the top fingertips away, 
reaching away. Start to feel that stretch and give into it. Using your breath to deepen and release. Expand in the rib cage. This is one of those stretches I always get to and I'm like, I didn't know I was so tight here. But when I get here, I'm like, wow. You can walk your fingertips away if that feels better. Start to play around with the chin angle. Make sure this feels good in your body. Always honor your body. Know that if it doesn't feel good, just pick a different pose for this time. Open and close your mouth. Two more breaths. Soften in the hips. Release the feet. And slowly, really, really slowly, y'all, come back to center. Ooh, ooh, right? I hope you're saying that with me wherever you're taking this class from. <clears throat> Inhale, reach up. Exhale, opposite side. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Release the neck. Start to move the fingertips away very slowly, super slow. Releasing the neck even more. Letting your ear go towards the ground. Never forcing. Reach as far down as you can. Then hold it and breathe. I definitely like to close my eyes in these types of stretches. So if you're not already, feel free. If you want to walk the fingertips away more, you're welcome to explore this pose. Never forcing, staying soft and relaxed. If you'd like to move the chin in an angle that feels like it's stretching it deeper, with no pain, maybe open and close your mouth. Didn't know you were going to get a hip opener. Start to slowly walk your fingertips back towards the midline. You didn't know you were going to get a hip opener in this class too. It's like you got wrung out. So after that stretch, let's go ahead and lay down on our back nice and easy. So I like to roll to my side first and then slowly come down. Let's go ahead and flatten the spine. Knees are bent, feet are flat. Good. Then bring your um, hands up in a goal post position. I'd like you to bring your legs together. So squeeze your legs and your knees together. We're going to do a gentle traction here in the low spine. Just after doing that hip stretch, I feel like I need it. So you might need it as well. Go back to your breathing from the diaphragm, 360 degree inhalation. You should feel everything open up in that big 360 degree pattern. And so for this traction in the low spine, it's a tiny little rock. We don't need to go very big. Nice and rhythmic. For me, I have scoliosis, which is some of um, the reason I had to have back surgery. And um, I've noticed like throughout the day, if I'm, you know, starting to feel some pain or something, I actually at night, I do this traction on my low back. So if this feels really good to you, I, I will literally do this for five or so minutes. So a longer duration of time in this kind of rhythmic movement. I also like to rock like this when I'm laying on my belly. So you know, with the face down on your belly, legs extended, you can kind of move your hips side to side. So I do both these traction stretches for my spine if it's something you really like. 
I'd invite you to try it. Okay, a couple more breaths before we start to add movement to our shoulders from this position. Okay, we'll inhale, extend your arms up, and then exhale, pulling them down, back where they started. So it's an inhale, reach, exhale, come down. You can continue rocking your knees. For me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop rocking my knees. I'm just gonna focus on my shoulders for now. So again, playing with our range of motion here. Breathing. Notice if you tend to hold your breath when you do these movements. Go back to the breath. Maybe you're able to get more range of motion as time goes on. Maybe not. I don't want you forcing it. Let's do five more. Last two. Last one. Nice job. We have one more static stretch before a strengthening movement we'll do for our shoulders. And then I think we'll be done for today. How's that sound? Good? Okay. So the I'm going to do this from a hero's pose. So we were here earlier. Um, just real quick for a stretch, an extra stretch. Why not? Curl your toes under. Sit back on your feet. Ooh, let's just get a little foot stretch for a minute. Give our shoulders a rest. How about that neck stretch? That was a good one, right? Hopefully it felt good for you. It feels good for me. I feel like I have a lot more blood flow in that area. Now I can think more clearly, which is definitely nice. <laughs> Mom brain here. <laughs> All right. And to counter the stretch, so if I'm going to stretch my toes this way, I, I want to give you a quick counter because I can't leave you hanging, right? It'll be a quick kind of like a downward dogish type of movement. So I want you to come into your, send your hips up, come into your downward dog. It doesn't have to be perfect today. And then curl one toe down. So you're putting a little bit of weight on the toes and then curl the other toe. So we're just kind of holding for a second or two. If you can't do downward dog right now, don't force it. You can kind of play with this motion from maybe your knees, just kind of getting a little bit of pressure on the tops of the feet, just to play around for a second. All right, we'll leave the feet alone. I don't want to do a full yoga class, but this is where you're going to use, if you have this, it's going to be very helpful. This is where you're going to use the band. What I do, it's not very scientific, but <clears throat> I go ahead and hold the top of the band here and then grab the bottom. I'm going to turn so you can see the bottom of the band here. What I don't want you to do is arch your back. I want a pretty neutral spine. And then slowly but surely you're going to start to work the hands down to where they're getting closer and closer. If you can grab your hands without the band, that's fine too. I actually like having the band. It seems to get me in better position, better, more of an upright position versus if I don't use it, I kind of, I'm kind of like, kind of um, shrugged forward a bit. So I think it's nice for this. So all we're doing is top hand reaching towards the bottom hand, just opening up in this position. Breathe, instead of breathing up vertically, I want you to breathe horizontally. Hold it for five breaths. Five breaths at my pace. You have three more. Two more breaths.
One more breath. Wonderful. So whatever arm was on top, you're going to switch it. Ooh, let's shake that out. Yes. Nice big stretch. So bring the um, band overhead. Hold on to it. Take the bottom arm. Wrap it around. Then just start to work your hands closer together. Once you feel like you're in a good stretch, then Make sure you're not arching your low back, neutral spine, and just hold there. Okay, now five more breaths from here. Notice where the breath's going in. See how much you can open up on that inhale and then slowly let the breath go on the exhale. Last two breaths. Last breath. Great, slowly release, shake it off. Go ahead and lay down on your belly. Okay, you're gonna need enough room so that you can extend both arms out to the side. I'm gonna use my block here for my head just for a minute so I don't um, affect the mic. So you don't necessarily need something at your head. I'm just using it for that reason. So arms are extended out from here. I want you to just work on lifting up, breathing, and holding. So that might be where you go today. We're gonna to lower down, then we're gonna lift up and hold. So first we're starting in a T position and then we'll kind of go up in a Y position. So when you hold, hold for about five seconds. Keep your breath pretty steady and fluid. Don't hold your breath. Then lower down for a second and then lift back up. So we're doing about five second holds. Starting to feel the back of the shoulders turn on. Even like the serratus anterior muscle group back here, we'll really get it when our arms are a little higher. If this is super easy for you, you can kind of extend a little higher up, lifting your chest as well. Again, I invite you to play with emotions to see what feels right in your body. Every body is different. And I've learned that not every exercise is for everybody, and that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with respecting my limitations because I have, I have many, <laughs> um, and I honor them. So let's do, from here, I want you to keep going. Let's do about three more. Getting a little bit of strengthening movements after all this opening. The next movement we're going to do, I want the thumbs to face up. So your thumbs are facing up towards the ceiling. We're in more of a Y pose. And as long as this feels good, lift up. Hold for five seconds. And release down. Lift up, hold. Release down. 
And you'll notice we're not using any weights here. We're just using the resistance of our arms. If this doesn't feel right, pick a different stretch for a minute. Or just breathe. That's always available to you. One day I went into a yoga class. Keep working. Holding up for five seconds and lowering down. And I'll tell you the story. I went into like a really nice studio, you know, spent the money to go take a practice in, in class. And it was one of those like warmer yoga classes. I don't know. I wasn't feeling it. I was not feeling very good. A couple minutes in, <laughs> I just like all I could do was child's pose. So it was a 90 minute class. And literally, I moved from child's pose to seat it to um, corpse pose or shavasana, the final pose. I just kind of moved from pose to pose, holding each for, you know, 15 or so minutes um, and just breathe. I breathed the entire class. I still think to this day that was my best class I've ever done. It just felt so good that I just was like, I don't have to do this. Like, I don't feel good, but yoga is, you know, more than just the asana, more than just the poses. And I just breathed because that's honestly what my body needed that day. So I invite you to, you know, just really listen to your body. You're lucky here because it's just, you know, you're at home or wherever you're taking this class, you don't have to really be in a class like that. But even if you were in a class, it's your body, no judgments. People are more probably worried about their own stuff than being worried about, you know, if you stay in, in child's pose for a few minutes in the middle of class. So just honor your body, know that it's okay to do what feels right for you. And you don't have to do everything the teacher says. All right, so my rebels, right? Come back into child's pose, take a stretch. Let's bring the hands, forearms together, prayer pose. Drop your head down. If you're religious, if I'm a Christian, you can take time to pray here. Check in, let go, let God. If you're not, just breathe. It's all good. All are welcome. Sit it up, send your legs forward, arms out to the side. From here, I want you to lift your hips up. So it doesn't matter how high you go. This is about as high as my back will let me go today, and that's okay. But fingertips are facing out away from the body. And I'm starting to shift forward and back, making sure that this feels good. If you don't like to move and you just want to hold it, just hold it. I kind of play with the head position, see if I like it back. See if I like to shift side to side instead of forward and back. Send the hips back behind you. Take a rest here in staff pose for a second. Big breath. Exhale out of the mouth. Inhale, big breath. Exhale out of the mouth. <sighs> Inhale, big breath. Exhale out of the mouth. Let's do that one more time. So a reverse tabletop position. Fingertips are facing away from the body, out and out. That feels good for me. Some people like it away from the body this way, fingers fa facing up. Just feel it out on your wrist, what feels good. Press the hips up. You can rock side to side. You can rock forward and back. You can stay still. You can do a little bit of it all. Neck can go a little back, not too far back. Or forward, looking towards the belly. I like to shift quite a bit forward and back. I like to play, like I said. Just checking things out here in the shoulder joint. This is a bonus, a little bit of a glute. You know, a glute or a glute strengthener. Big belly breath. And then slowly pressing your hips back into staff pose. You did so good today. I think you earned a Shavasana. So if you want and you have some time, join me for Shavasana. 
If not, you did awesome. Great work. We opened up the shoulders, opened up the neck, did a little bit of strength, and um, I hope you feel better. If you want, go ahead and lay down on your back. This is the best part of yoga class, in my opinion. <laughs> Let the hips open up, externally rotate, feet kind of fall away. This might feel uncomfortable for some people if they have back pain. Another option would be to bring the knees together and the feet wide. So that's another option for you. If it doesn't feel good, um, you can also lay on your side <clears throat> in like a child or a fetal position. Wherever you're at, palms face up towards the ceiling <clears throat> if you're laying on your back. Wherever you're at, close your eyes. Drop in. Shavasana is called corpse pose <clears throat> also. And the idea is just to fully surrender, to let go. So while you're laying here, if you start to feel all the thoughts, all the, the chatter of the mind, if you start to feel it, turn up. Don't judge it. Just let those thoughts come in. Let them pass by. Try not to attach to any, any one thought. A good anchor for you is the breath. So you can kind of stay with the breath as much as possible. And if you drift with the thoughts, just come back to the breath just gently coming back to the breath. Starting with some relaxation techniques, <clears throat> bringing the attention to our toes, relax the toes without moving them, just bringing that relaxation to the toes and letting them go. Relax the ankles. Relax the calves. Staying still, just sending that relaxation to the body part. Relax your knees. Top of the thighs are relaxed. Inner thighs release. Back of the thighs. Release your pelvic muscles, your pelvic floor, your hips, your glutes. Belly is soft, side body soft, low back safe and relaxed. Relax your upper back, relax your chest open heart, happy heart, joy-filled heart. Relax the shoulders. Thank them for all the work they did today. Relaxing all of the arm, the biceps, the triceps, elbows, forearms, wrist, all the way into the fingertips. Feel that new, fresh energy into your fingertips. Breathe. Neck is relaxed. Face is soft. Forehead, forehead relaxed. Back of the head. And the very top of the head. Taking the next few minutes to just be still and live, breathe in this peace.
keeping the eyes closed. Bring the attention back to your breath. Take a clean, cleansing breath in and a big release out through the mouth. Take a cleansing breath in and a big breath out through the mouth. In, big exhale out. And one more because it feels good. In, and big cleansing breath out. Roll over onto your side if you're not already there into fetal position. This is such a safe, comforting position. Just hold here for a second. Thank yourself. You know, be your coach. Be your own cheerleader. Believe in yourself. Be confident. And I think yoga is a good practice to start to cultivate those things. So come when you're ready up to seated position. And we can finish here together. If you stayed with me through this entire practice, thank you. Thank you for being here. I hope it feels good in your body and you were able to explore. I hope you have a lot more blood flow. And you can do this practice, you know, a couple times a week or once a week. Um, I have a couple more things on my YouTube channel, so you can su excuse me, subscribe to me, of course. And then three other ways we can work together. I have a digital course. I offer virtual coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And I also have, um, so people who are really into training and fitness, my background is physiology. And so I'm a personal trainer for kickoff. And that's a really um, cheap way to work with me. And um, it's like $2 a day, so 95 or less than $100 a month to work with me on through kickoff. So a few different ways. If you need one-on-one, -on -one, I got that. If you want to do something like kickoff to hit your goals, need more accountability, I have that. And then, of course, YouTube is a great place as well. So nice to meet you. Thank you for staying with me. I hope you feel well. I hope you feel wonderful. Namaste. And that's what we say in yoga, and it just means I honor you. I appreciate you, and I see the light in you and everybody. Thank you.